Hello, I'm Danielle Sayers, and like you, I'm wild about Washington. Musky fishing in Washington enjoys a following that is growing each year. Its fans have more than enough passion as they catch and mostly release this member of the pike family. Here are the basics from a recent day on Pierce County's Lake Tafts. We first planted tiger muskie about 18 years ago in Mayfield Lake. Since then, uh, we've been placing them in about 10 waters statewide and we've continued to, to stock them in seven waters. Uh, Lake Taps, the water we're on here today, has been planted since 2000. And we plant uh, very few fish, about a half a fish per surface acre. But it's turned into a real popular trophy fishery. We have about 16,000 uh, musky anglers in the state, or about 3% of our licensed anglers. They fish about three and a half days per year on the average, or about 56,000 man days of fishing, which economically converts to about seven and a half million dollars of economic benefit to the state. What do you think, 26? 25 and a half, 26, pretty close. This is one of the most important tools in the musky fishing trade is a large sturdy net plenty deep to keep the fish in the water so the fish doesn't get hurt there's some musky handling tools release tools that are real important to safely release a fish for your own safety and the fishes one of them is a jaw spreader it helps hold their mouth open so that you can get at a hook with some needle nose and that's probably the most important thing is a sturdy pair of needle nose Notice the lanyard so that you don't lose them in uh, the excitement. A pair of hook cutters, also very handy for a deeply embedded hook that it's not worth injuring the fish when you can replace a hook. I like to put a glove on the hand that I hold the fish with just to protect myself a little bit. And if I've got the fish under good control, I'm not going to get hurt, neither is the fish. And then the last thing we do is with a nice floating tape measure is get a quick measurement just so we've got something to brag about later. A good seven foot medium heavy action musky rod is a good all around rod. It'll cover just about everything, especially starting off in this in this sport. Probably one of the most important things is the leader. This is a 125 pound fluorocarbon leader. The fluorocarbon makes it pretty clear in the water. Bucktails are a great musky bait. Easy to throw, easy to retrieve. Just about anybody can fish them. But then, the, there again, the leader keeps you from getting bitten off accidentally, and it keeps the fish from starving to death with the bait stuck in his mouth. There's uh, plenty of different lures to use. A bucktail is one of the easiest, I'd have to say. A spinner bait, a glider bait. All these are sturdy baits, sturdier than a bass bait. A deep dive and crank bait you can cover from the top of the water column down to 12, 10 or 12 feet. And one of the most important things to me with these fish is the release of them and the safe handling of them. So it's quite a thrill to catch one and to be able to pass that along. Those fish will be a little bigger, a little smarter the next time. And, and because we released them very in a very good manner, and a healthy release, safe release, somebody else can get the same thrill that we enjoyed today. As we try our luck and skills fishing different waters, we must be mindful that we aren't also spreading nuisance species across the state. WDFW's Mike Wilkinson makes the rounds of the fishing tournaments to alert boaters to the dangers and what to do about it. Zebra mussels are very, very hardy. They get anywhere where you don't normally clean your boat, they can hide. They can un attach themselves inside the frame of your boat, under your lights, under the hole where you don't check inside where your motor mounts in here in the little holes places you aren't likely to check at all and the minute you put your water boat back in the water after say two three weeks has been out of the water they'll fall off into that lake now they're in that lake and they're going to grow they're just going to multiply any place where you don't normally check you need to check constantly in your boat because they can be anywhere on the outside surface underneath the bottoms where the motor mounts are at inside 
anywhere in here they can attach themselves and grow. You need to clean your boat, inspect your boat all the time. The reason these things got out here initially on boats and we were able to find them was because people didn't clean their boats, they didn't check their boats. Everybody needs to clean and check their own boats to make sure that these things do not get here. The best way to clean your boat on the outside is soap and water. Now if you're worried about them getting inside your engine, the best way to get rid of them that way is to take a five gallon bucket of water, mix up a six percent bleach solution, about a cup of bleach, mix it with five gallons of water, hook up the earmuffs to your engine over the intakes, run five gallons of, of water with a bleach solution through your engine, anything that's in there will run itself out once you run your engine. Another big problem that we have here in Washington, Idaho has it, Oregon has it, a lot of the lakes have got around here, is Eurasian milfoil, Eurasian water milfoil, okay? This stuff is the green mossy stuff you see floating on the water uh, in a majority of lakes. Any shallow, low-lying, warm water lake, it'll be in, okay? This stuff grows like crazy and in the summer, June, July, August especially, okay? People back their trailer into the boat, launch, okay? put in the water, take their boat off, they pull their trailer out of the water. There's milk foil hanging all over the trailer, okay? You've got to pull that stuff off when you, when you put your, mo engine, your boat back in the water, put the boat back on it when you're done boating, you pull it off, there's milk foil everywhere. Make sure you pull the milk foil off your trailer, pull off your engine, pull off your propeller, anywhere where the stuff is hanging because the police now are writing tickets if you've got that stuff hanging on your trailer going down the road. When you have a tournament, you have a lot of people from a lot of different states coming in here. You've got right now at this tournament, water tournament, we've got people from Oregon, people from Idaho, even some people from Montana that have come over for this tournament, and they're the ones that are likely to bring this stuff with them that they're not aware of. Uh, it being stuck to their boats, and then once they in, introduce their boats in our waters, they can affect our waterways with them. We need to keep it clean, especially getting out state borders, and that's what I'm. I'm kind of focusing on is people that might go live in other states and go back east, come back out and not clean their boats, and then they come into our lakes and they can still be alive. Whatever's on there can still be alive. Here are some of Washington's fishing opportunities in the weeks ahead. This is an update of a continuing story, a success story, as WDFW, with its partners including the Woodland Park Zoo, re-established the Western Pond Turtle. This year more turtles were added to an agency wildlife facility as well as a pond on state land in Mason County. We've uh, releasing our next set of pond turtles. This year we have 50 western pond turtles that we've uh, taken from Woodland Park Zoo where they were reared for a year. And we've split those into two groups. We'll have 35 of those turtles will go to our first true recovery pond in Mason County, which is called Goat Ranch Pond. Um, and uh, 16 of those turtles will stay at the South Puget Sound Wildlife Area, which we use as a breeding site for the turtles. We're doing real good. We started with about 150 to 200 turtles back in the 90s when they were really in trouble uh, down on the Columbia River. And from that uh, group, we've, we've grown to over 1,200 turtles out in the wild now. 
So we're doing very good and uh, continue to get more nests every year. And we hope to be uh, picking up uh, a couple more uh, recovery ponds in the, in the years to come. We care a lot, and so does the public, uh, the citizens of Washington State, about all the native species that we have here. Uh, Western pond turtles is one of the uh, foundations in any wetland system that you have. Um, they're um, food for other animals, and uh, they have a right of their own to, to be there and exist. Um, and they were once very common and a food staple for the early people of Washington State. So they have a history of being here. Um, just like uh, the bald eagle recovery, this is another success story about bringing back a species that's native to Washington that was almost eliminated. Well, the next thing that we'll do is we have uh, 13 nests that are up on our hillside um, at the ponds behind me and uh, we will allow those to finish being incubated in the wild uh, through September. In September we'll go out and dig those nests up, cap pick the eggs up that are inside the nest and transport those up to Woodland Park Zoo. They will spend a year at the zoo and hopefully we'll be back here next year again with those one-year-old turtles ready to go back into the ponds. Here is where you can see some of Washington's wildlife in the coming weeks. This has been Wild About Washington, brought to you by the employees of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Working together, we can keep Washington's outdoor heritage for future generations. Thank you for watching.